Okay, so I'm starting the broadcast now. I don't see any viewers yet, but <laughs> I'll let people trickle in. I mean, we are going to relate. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. We're starting to see people. Yay! Hey everyone, if you could just um, type in the chat box on YouTube um, what your name is, where you're watching from, we would love to know who's in the room. Hey everyone, if you I did that too. I had to close mine out so it doesn't no, you repeat could, this end. You could just put the YouTube on um, mute. Mute. Yeah. That's what I. Did. That's what I meant to say. I did. So we have D from North Carolina, Dana from Virginia, Carice from Pennsylvania, Ashley from Dallas, Olivia from New York, Alicia from Maryland. Oh my gosh, Shalika from New York, Jessica from Maryland, Toya from Baltimore, Michelle from Atlanta. Yay! Rodney from California. Ooh, ooh, California. Callie in the house. Congratulations on being able to, you know, convert the time. Because if you're in California, we're not on the same time. Um, Kimberly from Charlotte, Sierra from Boston, Renisha from Virginia, Lo from Maryland. Hey y'all. Tori, you can type in the chat too. I can type in the chat. I'm so excited. I'm trying to snag a cute little video of this to put on Instagram. Thanks, this way. This is awesome. So we'll give people a couple of more minutes to check in. Kimberly and Rowley. Deanna from Florida. Yay! Kiana! Kiana from Florida. Hey, everyone. Ah! It was my heart to see people I know here. <laughs> How come I can't type in the chat? No, every time I go, oh, this is this must be what you meant since I'm on BBU's account. It says I have to have a channel to talk. Oh, yeah. And you tried to warn me. Ohio. So you yeah. could open the link in, um, like, she's banded and talk to people. Well, can you see what they're saying just in case for, like, the mm -hmm. Q&A section? Oh, I can okay. see what everyone's saying. But if I, because what will happen is I have to log out. Um, to do that. And if I log out, we're going to lose connection. So um, I can't talk to you guys, but I'll just verbally yeah. comment back. <laughs> Johnny from South Carolina. There are a lot of South Carolina people. Cool. There are a lot of South Carolina people. So many. People. So how's y'all? I want to do it. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see. I would love if you would if you would post if you're a blogger or if you're a PR professional. Because I'm okay. curious to know how many bloggers we have in the building and how many PR professionals we have in the building. So go ahead and comment with, or if you're just someone who's cool and who's interested in all of this stuff, feel free to comment and let us know. I'm curious to see who's in the building. If you're someone who's <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're a part of Black Bloggers United. So Tori is the founder, Victoria, um, and I am the DC regional director. Uh, what comment did you get? I don't see that comment. Jessica asked if we were both in BR BPRS. Got gotcha. you. Their acronym is so cute. Audrey, we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so we have blogger, blogger, both, both. I like blo both. Bloggers are in the house. So now the real question is, are y'all members of Black Bloggers? <laughs> I love how Ashley's like, we're just going to shamelessly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yay. And a Yay. member. Yes, I'm a member, a new member as of last week. No, absolutely. You are a um, PR person in the DC DMV area. Make sure that you look into Beepers. Um, we'll have a slide about more information about them and how you can join them. Cool, you're considering joining. Well, thank you for considering me. I Just hope that this, this um, webinar helps you see the light. <laughs> Oh, wow, it keeps getting me recording, which looks crazy. Aspiring blogger. Love it. You should totally just go for the plunge and do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this would be really helpful for you as an aspiring blogger because there's a lot of information in this webinar for people who are just starting out um, and a lot of information for PR people and information for, you know, pros. So. Sure, see oh. in the house. But yeah, we are going to give people two more minutes because, you know, people are late. We have 42 viewers so far. Um, and I just want to make sure that no one misses information. Do any of you guys hear the webinar? So you're unable to hear it? I think I'm everyone correct. can hear it because they're answering our questions. That's true. But yeah. she says that she can't hear the webinar. Maybe. Are you using a phone or a computer? If your device you matters. Computer, yeah. Restart your device um, or try on a different device. Um, <laughs> sad face. We want you to be able to hear. Okay, perfect, Cheryl, that you're in public affairs. Um, this is Craig. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yes. Do you hear Craig? Our beepers. Mm -hmm. Beepers, beepers, beepers. Okay, so it is 7.10. And we want to be respectful of you all's time. So we are going to get started. Now, hold on one second as I have a bunch of things on my screen. Um, so what's going to happen about right. is, oh, Tori, if you see any questions, you can just send them over to me because I won't be able to see my screen. Um, Sounds perfect. You all, I won't be able to see you because I'm about to, you know, um, have my screen in full view so you can see it. But I love you all and I will be talking to you a little later. <laughs> so... So can you all see that? Everyone there, Sierra. Um, everyone should be seeing my um the basically the flyer, um, just say yeah if you can see it. Yay, okay, Dana, Dana said that she can see it. Perfect. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get started. All right, so. Oh.
Did it change? Oh yeah, it changed. All right, so this webinar is being presented by Beepers, Black Public Relations Society of Washington, D.C. and Black Bloggers United. And clearly today is May 15th, so we thank you all for being here. And this is a little bit about Beepers, if you aren't familiar with them. Um, they are the regional chapter of the National Black Public Relations Society here in D.C. And we are so happy to be presenting uh, this webinar with them. Um, they have become the premier professional association for communication practitioners of color here in the D.C. area. So if you are in the DMV, definitely, definitely get connected with them. If you aren't in the DMV, you know, find out if there's a chapter in your area so you can get connected. And this is a little bit about Black Bloggers United and I will let Victoria take this one away. Hello. <laughs> um, Black Bloggers United Incorporated is our network. Um, we are an online network based in Miami, Florida with different chapters across North America. Um, as Ashley said, she is our DC regional director and we currently have um, 13 other regional directors in cities such as Chicago, Atlanta, Toronto. And what they really do is act as liaisons for BBU um, in your local cities and host local events and really just act as the connector between you all and your local companies, PR firms, etc. So, and Ashley does a great job, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so our next slide is about me. Um, so that is me. <laughs> and I call myself a resiliency activator, um, which means I activate resiliency in people. So you know those days that are really tough and you're like, I'm about to drop out of school, I'm about to quit my job, and I don't even know how I'm raising these two kids because motherhood is just like not it for me. I'm the person who steps in and I say, girl or guy, you can do it, I believe in you. And this is why I believe in you, because you've done X, Y, and Z, and you got this. Um, so that's what a resiliency activator is. And I'm also a motivational speaker, a mental health aficionado, which means I just love mental health and talking about it. I'm also a content creator and a gratitude-filled young person. Um, and I currently create content on my website, don'tdieafraid.com, that inspires people <laughs> worldwide, <laughs> or at least, you know, the world in my head. <laughs> and I am also obviously the regional director for DC and also our outreach director. And now we are talking about me real quick. So um, again, my name is Victoria. I am a Miami-based blogger um, and micro-influencer. My personal website is she'scandid.com. You can find a little bit of everything on She's Candid from traveling to lifestyle to really just navigating being a girl boss um, and really taking the reins on your own personal brand or small business. Um, alongside that, as Ashley mentioned, I am also the proud founder and president of Black Bloggers United. And, you know, I'm so happy to be here with you all today as we just surpassed 650 members in BBU. So rapidly growing, so excited, um, yeah. Perfect, so now we will jump to the importance of blogging. And hopefully we all know the importance of blogging since you know most of the room here, based on our survey earlier, said that we are all vlog bloggers. And some of you all said that you're vloggers too, which is cool. Um, and what is the importance of vlogging? You know, think about your own journey. Think about what made you start. Is it because you saw a need and you said, hey, this is a subject that's not being talked about and I want to start talking about it? Um, is it because you were the go-to person for fashion in your friends group and you were like you know what i'm tired of giving y'all free advice and not getting anything from it i'm gonna start my own blog and own outlet and you know share that information with the world or was it because 
you know, you felt like you just needed a personal outlet. You know, some people are personal bloggers and that's important as well. Um, so the importance of blogging is to be a valuable voice in the world and to have your perspective um, be present it on a platform in a unique way. And also a huge, huge part of blogging is making sure that you are making a connection. Because newspapers, um, all those old forms of um, communications, they were getting the word out as we do now. But the difference between a newspaper or your local television is that human connection is missing. But as a blogger, that's what we're about. That's why engagement is such a big thing. That's why commenting is such a big thing. That's why, you know, social media is such a big thing. Because we are bridging that gap and we are valued communicators and we connect with our audience. So our next one is... What is blogging and content creation? So I think it was L. Um, in the chat, everything L. I know you said your name was different than that um, when you said it earlier, but I can't remember it. So we're going to call you everything L. <laughs> um, so um, I know you said, what is an Insta blogger? I don't remember who mentioned it before you, um, but that falls into our various types of blogging. Um, because right here we have just a few of the different types of blogging and content creation. So you have self-hosted websites. So that would be a don'tdieafraid.com or she'scandid.com. So then we also have YouTube channels. We have Leaf TV. If you're not familiar with that, that's a YouTube channel. Um, we have podcasts like The Friend Zone. We have media platforms. We have social media. So when we say someone is an Insta blogger, that means that they might have 3,000, 2,000, 150,000 um, followers on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, you know, social media platform, but they might not even have a website. They might not even be able to give you a www. And before, that was looked at as bad. It's like, well, you're not a blogger because you don't even have a real website. Like, who are you? But now we're seeing that influence can be made everywhere, whether that is on your www dot or whether that is on your Instagram account or your Twitter account. Um, influence and impact can be made anywhere, whether it's in 140 characters or whether that's in a photo with a long caption or maybe just a short, clever caption. Um, so when I, when you think about blogging, I don't want you to think about this limited view of, oh, well, I don't have enough money to have a website, or I don't know even how to use GoDaddy or WordPress or Squarespace, or I feel all this pressure to have it figured all out. And it's like, no, you can create content on whatever platform you want, and it will still have value. Because like I said in the previous slide, the importance of blogging is to make sure that your valuable voice is being heard. And you can honestly do that anywhere without even having to pay for a domain. <laughs> So, Tori, did you have anything to add? Yes, I wanted to pop in and say Ashley is absolutely right. And, you know, as we're going through everything, to keep in mind that, you know, it's kind of in a sense, yes, you should, if you want to be a blogger, if you want to be a content creator, cool. But we have come to this day and age where now everyone is aspiring to be an influencer. I think a lot of the terminology that we're going to use tonight is geared towards becoming an actual influencer because it doesn't matter anymore if you have great content or if you have a blog. If you're not able to influence people to, you know, shop at the shops that you shop at or want to go to the events that you've gone to, then there's true that's truly when um, the PR companies as well as you know, large brands, local brands are really going to want to work with you. And PR professionals, the actual influence behind bloggers is what we should be looking for. So that was my little tidbit on blogging. Perfect. And thank you. And I see in the comment section, Cheryl, she said influence and impact can be made everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. She noticed that major influencers are moving to microblogging and content creation on other platforms. And that's exactly right. So figure out what platform works for you. Um, personally, I... 
I don't have a favorite. I was gonna say personally I have a favorite, but that's a lie. I don't really have a favorite. Um, Instagram is a lot of work for me. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so don't feel like, oh, well, Instagram is it. Like I have to do that one. No, do what works for you because when you do what works for you, then you'll be consistent in it. Then you will show up as your perfect self in it. And that's where you'll get the most engagement because people will notice that like, oh, she or he is being authentic and standing true and what they believe in and what they stand behind. And that's the influence that Victoria was talking about. That's when you make a real impact, not when you throw up a picture just because you heard through an article that you have to post at least once a day. Well, if that post that you just posted is not connected to who you are and is really just to fill in the time, it's going to be obvious. So if you all have any questions about that, feel free to include them in the chat and we will have a Q&A section at the end and be able to answer them along the way. So here is the question. What power does blogging and influencing hold? And we kind of just talked about it. Um, it holds all types of power. Um, before, we used to be very dependent on advertisements and billboards and things like that. But now it's like, oh, this person's doing that on Instagram, or I see this person supporting this brand on Twitter, then that means something to me because I feel more connected to that person than I do to some random person on TV that I don't know from a can of paint. Um, so blogging really does hold a lot of influence. Tori, what do you think the answer is to this question? Um, I think that we've gotten to a point where people truly do see that power, and that power is kind of what you said, you know, before we used to um, get all of our advertising through commercials, through magazines, with people who didn't look like us, people who don't talk like us. And, you know, I think that the, the beauty behind bloggers and influencers is the people who these companies want to work with, uh, want to buy or purchase their products or services we connect with those people like i like i don't know about you well i know for sure you do but as bloggers we actually have connections with our audience so when we organically are like hey this is something that i recommend to you it's so much more uh, well received from people um and you know that eventually yields more um more purchases for the brand more brand awareness so really, there's so much power in, in bloggers who truly have a, a hold on who their audience is because it really, connecting with the right bloggers will put your company in like the greatest standing possible. Connecting with the right bloggers is the key word and that's exactly what we're here to talk about tonight. Yes, and for all of the bloggers in the room, realize your power, realize your voice. And don't say, because I hear this all the time, and I quite honestly have told myself this, and I would say like, oh, well, you know, I only have 100 people following me, or I only have 20 people liking this post, or whatever. Whatever those negative thoughts are that we tell ourselves, this is my resiliency activator coming in. Um, whatever those negative thoughts are that we're telling ourselves, we're diminishing our power, but we have to realize that we do have power, whether it's over five people or 5,000 people or 5 million people, your power is important. Um, and also realize that you don't have to be so focused on what everyone else is doing because a lot of people think, well, I see this person doing fashion and I see this person doing beauty, but those aren't my things. That's not where my power lies. My power lies in something unique like mental health or knitting or sewing or exercising. And it's like, well, well, how do I find my voice and stand up against these people who are, you know, having power in beauty and in style and in fashion? And you have to realize that when you're unique, that helps you so much more um, because, you know, when I go on Instagram, I follow, I don't know, at least 20 people who are talking about hair and beauty and fashion. But when I find that person who's talking about 
sewing and how that is therapeutic to them, that's cool. That's unique. Now you have power over me to really think about like, oh, is sewing something I can do? And now I can feel connected to you. And you're a new person who is having influence over me, as opposed to all these other people who are kind of competing for my attention. So realize that you, if you are, are in a unique you know, situation or you have a unique niche, that you need to play that up as good as you can. Um, because mm-hmm. I know um, sometimes I would get really frustrated as a mental health and inspirational blogger. And I would think like, oh, like, you know, I'm not powerful. My voice doesn't matter. If I disappear for three months, it's no big deal. And people would hit me up like, girl, like your Sunday posts were helping me. Um, so realize that even though you might not see the impact from your side, you are making an impact. So keep on pushing with your power. Absolutely. Rich, nit, they say niches are the riches. That is where, you know, long term for, for bloggers, that's where your money is to be unique and really, you know, go into your actual respective niche. Because like uh, Ashley said, how many fashion bloggers are out there? Not to discourage anyone who is a fashion blogger, but really diving deeper into I am specifically you know, a travel fashion blogger. I wear outfits that specifically correlate to wherever I'm traveling next. You know, maybe something like that is an actual niche. And that is where you become very marketable to um, brands and PR companies. And now we are going to talk about the actual correlation between bloggers and PR professionals. This is why we're here tonight. I know everyone is like, how on earth do we work together? And we have the answer for you. So when you look at bloggers and PR, so just so everyone, we went over what bloggers are. PR people are representatives on behalf of larger brands, right? They're set in place to really handle um, a company's press and um, do things such as product placement, um, brand activations, um, events, things like that. A lot of times companies who do go through PR firms um, will have um, will will have PR firms conduct those respective things for them. With that, things such as um, product placement, that's where bloggers come into play. Um, Things such as advertising, um, event coverage, event recaps, media lists, all those are your PR firms. So speaking specifically to my PR professionals, bloggers are your walking, breathing, living media. If you want your blog to, if you want your, um, let's say you're having a product lunch for a lotion company. If you want your um, product to be seen across everyone's social media platform who is a mother to young children, right? What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to reach out to your mom bloggers who tap into that respective audience. Make sure they're on the media list. Make sure that they have personal invites. Um, Make sure they go away with a swag bag filled with those products. That's really how you get bloggers incorporated into what you were already supposed to be doing for the brand. Um, And bloggers, from your standpoint, um, like I just said, you would be invited to attend things um, as press, contacted via the press company. Um, You would also, some press companies send out just products just for you to test, to try, to have. Um, And a lot of times, once you start developing a relationship with a PR company, you will do one thing really good, like you'll cover an event very good, and they'll come back to you with, hey, we have some new products for X, Y, and Z. Hey, would you be interested in going to this event that's also happening in the city? So really, the correlation is kind of like, I like to think of it as the bloggers are the workers, the PR companies are the middleman, and the companies that you're trying to work with are like the companies that you want to work with. So really, the PR is essential, the essential middleman for those large corporations that you know. Say you want to work with Target. Target, you're not reaching actual Target headquarters all the time. You're going to probably go through a third-party PR firm, probably set up in the respective city that they're hosting the event in, et cetera. Um, So really, how they work together is just being mutually beneficial, 
whether it's inviting bloggers to events for um, content for their own websites. Because at the end of the day, as a blogger, you guys know we have to have that continuous content. Um, so we receive that content. We receive those products. And PR companies, you working with bloggers yields an easier job for that product placement, that advertisement, and that event coverage. Um, so really, those are the ways. And mind you, there are countless ways. I've seen people do brand activations where um, bloggers have received cars for a week uh, from a PR company. I've seen brand activations where people send coffee machines to mom bloggers to review. Um, and I myself, I know I've been invited to countless events on behalf as press. So um, it's really navigating the relationship and truly understanding the correlation is just knowing it's always a give and take. Um, and it's really, really, really important as a blogger or a PR professional to really work on that relationship because it's very helpful as a blogger to know I'm getting invites to this event because I'm, I'm close with this PR company. I know that they're going to work with me on the next brand activation. And PR professionals, it is so great to have bloggers who are kind of in your, um, like in your, in your little hub, you know, so when you know they've always done a good job, they always deliver, oh, I have a new um, client who wants to do X, Y, and Z. I know I can reach out to her and she will show up. Um, so that's really the true correlation between the two. Um, I see that we have a question going into depth on brand activation. Brand activation could be um, different things. Um, the best example, which was what I provided, is probably using a car. So when I think brand activation, it's actually bringing the brand to life. Excuse me. It is not... Um, taking a picture with the product and putting it on Instagram. It's not doing a review. It's actually going through the motions of the actual brand. So like I said, I know a blogger who worked with Mazda, who they contacted her to do some stories while she was in the car, to travel with the car for a week. That would be deemed a brand activation. Um, really getting um, some actual action and activity going with the blogger in motion alongside the brand. So I hope that answered your question, Cheryl, as we go to the next slide, where we are going to be talking about securing advertising with bloggers. So this is, this is huge. Like if you, if you have not, you know, if you kind of zoned out a little bit, this is huge on both ends for both um, bloggers and PR professionals to really understand how you should be securing advertisement um, with bloggers because it it's just crucial, guys. It is very crucial. If you know anything about my personal blog, pitching and etiquette and all that stuff is major because you can lose clients, you can lose relationships with bloggers or PR professionals based on how you go about this next step. So definitely pay attention as we move on. So when you're securing advertising, I'm going to go back. When you're securing advertising with a blogger, I'm speaking to my PR professionals right now, it's important to know what you're looking for. Um, at, blogging is still a new industry, which I know a lot of, um, it's kind of like a two-way street, right? Um, it's something new. And just like anything that's new, you have to educate yourself on it. So a lot of PR professionals are educating themselves on it right now. Um, but we're here to, you know, we're here to solve that problem and just let you know kind of what you should be looking for when you're looking to secure advertising with a blogger. Number one, we can't avoid it. We can't hide it. Following. Following is definitely an important factor in securing your advertisement. Um, as much as we'd like to say, you know, you don't have to have a certain number of followers, depending on who the client is, because I think a lot of times people forget PR companies represent clients, um, and clients sometimes are like, we want someone who has X, Y, and Z following. So obviously, you're going to be looking for that following. Aside from that, you should also be looking for that appropriate niche that's going to tap into the target audience. Um, I could have a blogger who has 100,000 followers, but if all of them are into 
partying and going out, um, going clubbing, and you're representing a Christian organization who is speaking about churches, maybe that might not be the best thing. So really focusing on doing your due diligence and research on the niche of your blogger, because I've seen people who have um, turned down campaigns because their target audience is 18 and under, and they don't want to work with an alcoholic beverage company. Um, so really understanding their actual niche and what they're there to do um, is important when reaching out to a blogger. Now the next, the, the next point I need everyone to do is engagement. We live in an era where people can purchase likes, per they can force comments out of different people. Um, so there's there's so many ways to get around, you know, having those large numbers but not truly yielding that actual engagement. And the reason we touched on it earlier, the reason that engagement is so important is because your engagement shows your actual influence. If you if you I love to use events as an example because I think it's the easiest thing to use. If you have a hundred thousand followers, and hypothetically, you know, you you um, work with a company to promote their event, and as you're promoting and as you're getting these tens of thousands of like and thousands of comments, but no one's actually purchasing, no one's actually going to the website, no one, there's no actual return on investment. You know, that's why it's so important to, as a PR professional, to look at the engagement of your bloggers. How do you do that? You can look at things like their actual traffic. Like everyone loves social media because you can see how many followers people have and stuff, but ask a blogger, how many of these people are actually going to your website? What is the actual, uh, uh, what is the word I am looking for? Um, the actual, I can't think of the word, but how many people actually go from your social media to your website? How many people are actually reading your book? How many people are commenting, engaging, sharing? What are they saying? Those things would be deemed your engagement and it's so, so, so important. All my bloggers in the building, I'm sure you guys already know how big engagement is um, for you all. And the last point is definitely credibility. We are going to touch more so on credibility in the next slide, but really, um, you know, you just want to be sure that you're working with people who are professional. Um, as PR professionals, again, speaking to you all, um, yes, it was convert, okay, everyone said conversions, engagement, return on investment, analytics. It was basically conversions. It was conversions, that's what I meant to say. Thank you for um, all chiming in. Um, but yes, in terms of your credibility, you, as a PR professional, there's deadlines to be met. You have to send reports to your clients as to who you secured for the event, what exactly they did. You want to be sure you're working with a credible blogger. You want to be sure that you're working with someone who takes it seriously and not just, you know, as it's just something fun. Um, so that's something, like I said, we're going to go deeper into that on the next slide. But credibility is definitely a thing. Before we move away from this slide, I do want to say, you know, bloggers speaking to you specifically, all of you should have a general idea as to, you know, what these are. So like, you know how many people are following you um, and, you know, that matters when reaching out to companies or working with companies. You should know your niche. If, you, if anyone in here is unfamiliar with that, your niche is basically your respective... Um, area, your category, um, like a fashion blogger, a beauty blogger, travel blogger. You don't necessarily have to have a niche, but it definitely is helpful in being able to pitch yourself to brands and really narrow down the companies that you're trying to work with and master a respective area of blogging. Um, your engagement. So again, going back to how many people are actually commenting, because it doesn't matter if the big number is cute. Companies really want to know how, like, how many people are actually paying attention, not just the likes, not just, you know, the follows. How many people actually care? Because at the end of the day, that's what companies and PR firms are looking to pay you for. Um, and again, we're going to talk about how to establish your credibility. 
as a blogger on the next slide. As I transition to the next slide, I'm going to answer. Yeah, there were some questions about pitching etiquette. Um, that one was a little higher, as you can find it. Um, I'll give my take on pitching etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Just closing too much. Um, but pitching etiquette, I believe that was Cheryl. And then Tori, you could look at the, the next questions. Um, pitching etiquette. Pitching etiquette is just contact Tori, pay her to make you a letter because <laughs> so many people have pitching so wrong. So when you are pitching, you essentially want something from a company, right? You want free product or you want a free trip or you want free clothing. You want something, right? So why would you go to a person and say, hey, I want this crickets and, and nothing else? Okay, you want this and what? Like, you know, if you are a parent, you know, your children sometimes beg for things like, mommy, I want this candy and what? I want a million dollars. You know, how is you eating this candy going to benefit me for your child eating that candy it's not going to benefit you so pitching etiquette comes down to showing the person or the company that you're pitching towards that there is a return for them so if you're going to let's say we're using mazda <laughs> um <laughs> if you're pitching to use this car you know during your trip to your family reunion Okay, that's nice, but how is that going to help Mazda? Yeah, you might post two, po two pictures on Instagram, but in the end, Mazda's an important company. Everybody already knows who they are. They don't really need you to help them out because they're bigger than you are, quite honestly. So when you're pitching them, it's etiquette like you would do in any other letter. You approach them and you have a very, very, very short section about yourself. You want to make this about them. You want to make this about how your relationship will be beneficial to the both of you. And you also want to be respectful in this. You never want to you know, <laughs> be rude and say, Mazda, I saw in your last commercial that, you know, um, the, the car was dirty and the family wasn't diverse. So I'm going to help you all out and I'm diverse. So y'all need to send me a car. What girl that is rude <laughs> and uncalled for. So when it comes to etiquette, you never want to step to a company and say, Oh, this is what you're doing wrong. And this is why you need me in your life. No, it needs to be showing, Hey, this is beneficial for the both of us. Here's a little blurb about me, but all the rest is about you and how this can work out. Like mm -hmm. Sierra just said, concise and to the point. Because tons of people are pitching these people all the time, and they have real jobs. So therefore, they don't have time to, <laughs> Masa, you need my help. Exactly, Shara, how rude is that? That's just rude. And that's what we mean by etiquette. Um, yes, absolutely. No, I. it's so funny because you would be surprised how many people actually insult the other party um, in trying to pitch them. It's, it's quite interesting. I actually just had experienced it today. But um, yes, speaking to PR professionals as well, because I think that bloggers, you know, blog pitching, if you know anything about my blog, pitching is a thing. Um, PR professionals, I, I, I know that you guys are all incredible in this audience, so I don't have to say it, but PR professionals have to have that email etiquette as well. Anytime I have been pitched by a PR company to go to an event, to have a giveaway, to do anything, I have received a formal pitch from them as well. So if there is a PR company and they send you something that's unprofessional, um, that's probably not someone that you want to work with. If you're required to go to them very professional, you can expect the same from a PR company. And you know, Sierra is a PR professional. There's PR professionals that are in here, concise and to the point, they are about their business. So you can definitely expect the same treatment from them. I'm going to go back to should you separate your personal social media from your blogger-based business social media? I personally would say yes. Um, because if you really, if this is to speaking to, if you want to do blogging as a, a, a form of a small business side income, um, 
and not just for fun. So I'm speaking to those of you who are thinking that stance. If you're trying to do blogging for fun, you can tune out on this part. If you're trying to do it as a business, you need to have separate. I, I don't care what anyone says, you need to have separate or you need to just completely get rid of what you've had and move forward with what you're trying to do because when you have a personal, th that's where you share pictures of your family, that's where you're connecting with your friends from high school, that's where you might post that selfie that has nothing to do with your brand. Um, that's your t place to be you. Unless you find a way to truly brand all of that to align with your company, there's, there's no per reason that it should be on your blog or business page. Um, even though we have, you know, social media accounts that, even though this is a question on your social media accounts, think of your blog. Would you post that selfie on your blog? Would you post that picture of your dog on your blog? You know, if you if you want to post it on your blog, it shouldn't be on your social media for your blog specifically. That is why I personally have a personal social media account, um, specifically Instagram. I think Instagram, this is the biggest um, on. I specifically have a personal Instagram and I have my blog Instagram just because every now and then if you need to drop the selfie it's okay it doesn't interfere with my own personal brand um, so I do hope that that answered the question everyone is different I will say I've just found that many people who do do this as a business are really trying to um, expand their brand treat it like a brand or business and with a brand or business there's no place for you know that that actual purse those personal photos and those personal moments um, if you're treating it such as a business. So I hope that that did answer your question. And I believe I actually answered this question. Yes, I do have templates for pitching available on my website um, for both parties. If you're a small business, pitching to bloggers because there's a way you should do it. And if you are a blogger pitching to businesses, there is also a way you should do it. Um, so for more information, she was so kind to, to provide the link because she is so sweet. We are going to go back on topic now. <laughs> I love all of this conversation, though. I really do. But yeah, I'm just making back. sure we answer all the questions. We did. Oh, did I miss one? Okay. No, I think we did, yeah. Okay. If not, we will have Q&A at the end if we did miss something or if you wanted to ask something more. So moving right along to the next slide. Um we're going to go talk about credibility. Mm -hmm. So, oh, that's so funny. We said the same thing. <laughs> we did say the same thing. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so a huge part of credibility is being honest. So in the previous slide, we were talking about, you know, PR companies making sure they know what they're looking for. But as bloggers, we also need to know what we are looking for. And <laughs> it's so funny because Tori did a periscope on this a couple, like a week ago. And she was saying, you know, sometimes I turn down opportunities. And everyone was like, what? You turn down opportunities? Why would you do that? And that's because if you don't turn down opportunities and you aren't honest about what you stand for and what you will promote, you will lose all source of credibility. So if you are boasting yourself as a mental health guru like myself, right? But then I'm over here and um, mental health guru and a person who is, um, I don't know what can go against my mental health. I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I don't know what can go against. Like, what can go? Okay, let me not use myself as an example. Let's say <laughs> you are an exercise guru, okay, mm -hmm. and you just got some money from a company to talk about binge eating um, Doritos. Doritos is about to pay you six hundred dollars for you to post one photo, but this whole time. You've been telling us, you know, about your healthy meals, your meal prepping, all of this, your vegan snacks, and you know, you're you're just so healthy. But that email from Doritos says 600, and you know you got to keep the Wi-Fi bill on for this month. <laughs> so, <laughs> to take that $600 and go over here and post all over your Instagram about those Doritos, 
that's messing up your credibility because all your followers are going to be like, girl, you was just telling me about your meal prepping and your carrots and your hummus. And now all of a sudden, after 3,000 photos of your carrots and your hummus, you want to talk about Doritos? Mm-hmm. Your but face. Ashley, they're, and that's they're really example, messing up though. your credibility. And so, so many times, especially if you're a smaller blogger, all you think about is the money and oh this is a great opportunity doritos is a huge name you know this is such a great opportunity but you need to realize is it true to who you are you know and clearly you're following <laughs> audrey you cannot go from quinoa to cool ranch <laughs> y'all are hilarious um but no honestly that really messes up your credibility mm -hmm. i don't know if you've ever experienced that where you're following someone and then they do something slightly out of character and you're like um excuse me uh this is not what i followed you for you know this is not what i came to you for i came to you to learn about this quinoa and now you're giving <laughs> people rent now i'm disappointed and pr people they need to realize that as well you know make sure that you know who you're reaching out to and you know what their followers are there for. And mm -hmm. also on top of that, on top of staying true to who you are, make sure that you are good at telling stories because posting a photo of your cool ranch, what is that doing for me? What is that doing for me? Maybe it makes me a little hungry, but if the, the photo that you're posting is actually telling a story about how, you know, you were at the gym and it was a long, hard day and you hadn't eaten all day, it was against, you know, your normal schedule, but Bay came over with the Cool Ranch and you were like, oh, I'm going to have to, you know, just eat these Cool Ranches real quick because my refrigerator is out. And then you eat it and then, you know, you go on to say how you feel like you fell off the wagon and here are three steps to how you're going to get back on the wagon. That is a story. That is something that I can believe because all of us have, you know, good habits, good intentions. And sometimes we fall off the wagon. Sometimes, you know, Bay comes over with the cool ranch and we are just <laughs> flustered. And with this cool ranch. But then you're telling people, okay, these are three steps on how I got back onto my meal prepping. And that adds value because you telling me that you ate cool ranch, that's not really adding value to my life. But when you say like, hey, I really fell off the wagon and here are three steps on how I got back to eating my carrots and hummus, then that can be helpful for those of us who are trying to get our lives back right. You know, because those three steps can be helpful for all of us. So yeah, be a good storyteller. That is the point and be honest to yourself. Mm -hmm. Ford, what would you like to say about credibility? Yeah, that definitely builds up your credibility. Um, like she was saying, if you do something that's completely out of pocket, out of character, you know, you might make money, but you're going to lose. I don't eat cool ranch, actually. I don't like ranch in general. Um, I know I'm very weird for that. Um, but no, definitely, you mess up your credibility for money now. Um, and in long term, like the people who you were trying to, you know, reach and influence, they left. They're gone if you um, lose that, if you lose being honest and true to your brand. With that, PR companies, I think that there have been multiple times where PR companies, you have to do a better job. Um, let me not say you have to do a better job, but there should be, like we were saying, much research done into who you're reaching out to. Um, knowing your blogger, I, I, again, I know that everyone in here is like amazing. I've received emails about things that have nothing to do with me. Like I've received emails about beard trimmers. I have received emails about, um, bird food, uh, thingies. I don't have a garden, like things like that. I, I've received emails on a whole bunch of things. And I know that there are many bloggers who can also attest to that. Um, the credibility is really when it ties into the authenticity. If you're trying to have ad placement with a blogger and it makes no sense, even if there is a blogger out there who's like, yeah, sure, I'll take this bird food feeder and I'll put it up on Instagram real quick. 
and then keep it moving and collect my money, you're not going to yield those results that your clients are actually wanting. You have to really go in detail and find that person who is out there in the garden and could really use that bird feeder. You know, um, that's where the kind of, <laughs> yes, I've seen it all. Um, that's where the credibility really comes into play and going hand in hand with that, when you're reaching out to your bloggers, you know, if you don't know a lot about them, if you see and you think that they would be a good fit, when you pitch them, don't be scared to ask for things like their media kit, which should also detail, you know, their previous collaborations. Asking them for their media kit is not you like, you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, I've had people inquire about my media kit before they actually share the campaign they'd like for me to work on. Um, the media kit will basically really go, it should, and bloggers, you should listen to this too, it really should go into detail on what their blog is about, what their numbers are on that blog, and going into, you know, what previous work they've done, different uh, companies that they've worked with, that's truly what the media kit is, and that really just seals the deal on their credibility. So, to my PR people, if all else fails, if you're scrolling through Instagram looking for a blogger to work with uh, this client of yours, and you want to pitch them, you think that their Instagram fits, but you're not entirely sure that everything aligns with the brand, send them an email and inquire about their media, inquire about their previous collaborations to make sure that they're truly the right fit, because there's nothing worse than, you know, like Ashley was saying, something that just completely does not align with the brand. You will lose, the company will lose, and it just will not be a mutually beneficial relationship. Should you include your media kit on site or should it be spent upon request? Are you asking, okay, well, should you send or are along you, with the pitch? Like, okay, so this is the same question. Um, it depends. Um, hmm, it really depends. I have sent some pitch letters out without the media kit and I've sent the majority of mine out with the media kit. The reason that it's so important to send the media kit from a blogger perspective is because the company knows completely everything of what they're getting. So if it really doesn't align with the brand or say they go on your, say for example, they go onto your Instagram, right? And it doesn't look like it aligns with the brand, right? But in your media kit, you detail specifically how you're like an advocate for this, for this um, disease and, 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 I don't know. I'm trying to think of an example and I can't, but your media kit allows you to shine. And specifically to my smaller bloggers, I've talked about it many times, your media kit allows you to overcompensate for your size. Because going back to what PR professionals are looking for, a lot of times the PR pros, you guys are looking for your following automatically. People see 10K, 20K, 30K on Instagram and they're like, cool, I want her for my campaign. For people who have a smaller following, you have to really be able to sell to a PR company why they should work with you. Because they don't know that even though Susie has 20K, but nobody actually really follows, follows her. You need to let her know that here, Samantha over here, I have 4,000 followers, but I bet you about 50% of them are on my mailing list. About 25% of them actually engage with me. And a swift uh, five percent actually purchase products based on my recommendations. So those are the things that you can include in your media kit and really go into detail on how you are a credible blogger. And going back to the PR side, this is why I hope that you guys have been listening. That this is why the media kit is so essential because it literally, like I said, seals the deal on the credibility of a blogger. If you get a media kit and it's a hot mess and it doesn't completely, you know, dive deeper as to why you should work with them, why they're a good fit for the company, they might not be the best fit for your client. You don't want to ruin, you know, have your client upset because you're trying to place them with a blogger and it just, it's it's a no. So I hope that answers the question. Should I include a media kit upon request? Answer that. Also, how do you feel about including local brands you work with in your media kit? Absolutely. I think the more the merrier with your media kit. Your media kit is your chance to shine. Um, I mentioned on my website who I've worked with on my collaborations page, and I also mentioned some of those names again in my media kit. No matter how big or small, you know, I received my first national campaign after working with some smaller businesses. But even if it is a smaller local business, it shows 
hey, she's worked with three companies and she knows how to do it. So I'm a large national brand. I'm going to trust in her because I see that she's done three collabs in the past. You're more likely to get a collaboration and secure an actual partnership with a PR company or a company in general if you've had a collaboration period rather than having no collaboration to show. Um, so I hope that that answered that question from Micah. Um, what should be in your media kit if you're new to blogging? And Ashley answered that. And Tanisha, what I meant by like, even if you haven't officially worked with a company is it's okay. People think like, oh, I can only promote this if, you know, they're paying me, which is a lie because mm -hmm. how can you go to a brand and say, oh, Mazda or no, that's a bad example. Oh, Alex and Annie, I want to work with you. Send me some free bracelets. But if they go on your, your blog or your, um, your social media, there's no jewelry. There's no nothing. How do they know that you even like bracelets? Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to work with Alex and Annie, you better go over there and start sharing on your platforms how you like jewelry, how you love, you know, maybe this handmade bracelet that your little cousin made for you for your birthday, you know, how much it means to you. Um, because just because a, a brand isn't paying you doesn't mean that you know, you shouldn't be promoting them. Because if you already, like I personally have two Alex and Annie bracelets that some people bought me and I love them. I wear one of them every day. So working with Alex and Annie would be cool. But the fact that I already wear that on a daily basis and it's probably in every one of my pictures anyway, because it's literally like glued to my body, it shows that I'm already a brand ambassador for this company. So if I approach them and say, hey, you should pay me for doing this, they'll be like, well, yeah, we see that you're already promoting us. So why not? We have a couple thousand that we could drop in your little PayPal account no problem you know that's what they're looking for they're looking for people who already love the brand because that also goes back to credibility because if you know you have no jewelry anywhere on your site and then all of a sudden you popping up with bracelets like where did this come from you just told me that you were allergic to gold and now you over here promoting bracelets like there's a disconnect so you want to make sure that there is no disconnect um i see there's a ton of questions coming in um, we're going to leave off with that question just so we can get through. Um, we only have like a little bit left guys and we are going to come back during the Q and a, but I just want to be sure for anyone who maybe has to leave since we've been here for a little bit, um, that we do answer the actual content in the webinar. And then during the Q and a, we can go back and answer all, I promise they're all going to get answered because that's exactly why we're here. Um, and I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm, yeah, this is the last slide that we have anyway. So it totally makes sense to put you guys on hold for 2.5 seconds. Um, so we kind of talked about this. How do you contact and secure advertising? It's all about pitching them with a professionally written email. Like, I mean, you can go about it differently. I've seen people who have sent actual mail. I personally am not experienced in that. Um, and when they do send mail, it's typically to introduce themselves, right? So going back to like, um, someone asked what a media kit is. Yes, it's similar to your resume. So if you do send a, a great pitch letter and media kit, remember, if you've never put yourself in front of that brand or company before, it might be the first time they're, you know, hearing about you. So sometimes the best method of contact initially is to actually just introduce yourself. And that is what I've seen people, I've seen people send, um, you know, welcome letters like, hi, I just wanted to welcome you to my brand, let you know I'm in the area, um, send welcome emails. I personally have sent out a couple emails just to let local companies know, hi, I'm here, I'm a blogger, and I have yielded um, some inquiries based on that. So, you know, but what I will say is all contact should be professional. If someone is sliding into your DMs, PR company or blogger, it's a no. You know, you have to, if you want people to take you seriously, you need to conduct yourself seriously and in a professional manner. That's with anything in life. Um, so, no, it needs no DMs, no ads on, on Twitter, you know, at, uh, <laughs> at this company, hey, can we work together? No, um, that's no. 
Um, also, when reaching out, you have to figure out what you're offering. As Ashley touched on, and I talk, I talk about so often, when you pitch someone, it is not about you. You are letting them know, when I pitch people, I think it's the first two sentence I tell them who I am. After that, it is all about them, what I'm offering to them, why it's beneficial to them, what I like about them. It like You have to go to someone and understand what you're offering forward and back. You cannot go to someone and be like, hey, I'm a fashion blogger, you're a fashion site, can I have a product? What is the storyline behind it? How are you going to incorporate it into your content? Do you have a weekly newsletter it's going out in? Are you going to showcase it on your Insta story in an unboxing? You need to go deep into what you're offering if you want people to take you seriously. PR professionals, it is the exact same thing. Bloggers, I don't know how many times we've all discussed receiving vague emails like, hey, we want you to review this new product, check it out with this link, let me know if you're interested. That is so vague and doesn't say anything as to why you even think I would be a good fit to review it, why you want to work with me particularly over everyone else, what exactly you're looking for. When you're contacting either side of this spectrum, you need to be very clear and very to the point as to what you want and what you're offering. Like when I pitch, I tell you guys, I bold. I seriously bold what I want from a PR company. And most of the times PR companies will bold, highlight, italicize very important details in their email so there's no confusion. They will let you know, I would like for you to cover this event, show up, your parking will be taken care of, um, you will receive VIP access. You'll be allowed to interview the celebrity before the event begins. And that's, you know, what I'm offering to you in exchange for you just coming. It needs to be very clear to both. Hey, y'all. So we lost Victoria. Oh, <laughs> I came back. I don't know what happened. I was on a roll too. Like I was really on a roll. You were. Um, it needs to be very clear. That's where you were. Okay. okay. It just needs to be very clear to both parties what's going on here. Don't like if you think that you are being um, too, too clear. Like continue to be like be more clear. There's no such thing as too clear in emails because there's just you never want to add um, allow for room for. Um, what is it called? I cannot, I cannot use my words today. Assuming. You never want people to assume this. Assume that. Um, you just want to be very clear when you're offering things. Additionally, I think another big factor is negotiation. PR professionals, do not be scared to negotiate with bloggers and bloggers the same. You know, I have, um, the reason I say this is because people look at negotiation like it's a bad thing. I think negotiation is a great thing. You know why negotiation is a great thing? Is because sometimes when you do reach out to someone and you think you covered all your bases, sometimes you haven't. So there's room for negotiation to make sure, you know, whether it's payment, whether it's certain aspects of the partnership being covered, things like that. I'll give you an example. Um, I have negotiated with a company because I had to travel to the to the event. I had to I, I didn't, but I had was supposed to be paying $20 for parking. Um, I was supposed to be paying for like a wristband. So I negotiated with the respective PR person to have all of that comped. I said, I'll come free of charge. I won't charge you to do the press coverage, but I need to make sure that my parking is taken care of and I have a VIP wristband because, you know, a lot of times, I know as PR professionals, you'll send out invites to many people, right? You'll send it out to multiple bloggers. It'll all be the same thing. But certain things like that, cert other, certain bloggers need more than others. Certain ones, you know, if I'm traveling, I, I'm definitely getting free parking. That's just kind of a thing, um, especially here in Miami, things like that. So um, do not be afraid if someone asks. To negotiate with you um, don't take it as you know they don't want to work there are some genuine concerns that some people have uh like i said you know if i'm traveling 45 minutes for an event for free you guys can catch the parking tab 
Um, and bloggers, I would also say don't be scared to negotiate when you are getting pitched by companies. If there is a factor, for example, I keep using the same example, but it's a great one. If you know you're going to have to come out of pocket for parking for this, do not be afraid to negotiate with the company and let them know, hey, I don't mind doing X, Y, and Z, but in return, I would need to have X, Y, and Z on my end from the company. Um, you know, I go back to, this is a professional setting. If you're trying to do it in a professional sense, it's a professional setting in the workplace, negotiation, a negotiation is a thing. So don't be scared of it, don't avoid it. Um, just be very clear. And then, you know, the greatest thing is like the next time, around that company already knows how you operate right that's the beauty of building the relationship between the pr company and the blogger you guys already know what it is so in the next event you get invited to they already know your parking is covered um and the last point in terms of contacting and really securing the advertising is staying in contact um certain times you know you might just be invited out as press you might not actually have to do a recap but still send it to the pr company send it to the pr company to say hey thank you so much for inviting me out i wanted to send you my recap even if they didn't ask for it pr companies don't be afraid to continue to keep bloggers in the loop with upcoming um initiatives upcoming um you know things happening staying in with that constant communication between both parties truly develops that relationship which like i said is meant to be mutually beneficial. If it's not meant mutually beneficial, then it might not be the relationship that I'm talking about. But PR and blogging relationships is should always be mutually beneficial. So think of it as a relationship, ladies and gentlemen. And in any relationship if you do not communicate, you mm, that's a that's a that relationship might not be heading in the right direction. So keeping that open line of communication. I don't know if Ashley wanted to add any little last minute tidbits before we open it up for live Q&A. Yeah, so I wanted to say, you know, don't play down or neglect the impact of your local PR companies. Um, and, you know, the fact that someone asked, you know, should we even include local PR companies in our pitch letters, well, not in our pitch letters, in our media kits show that we don't give them enough respect. Your local PR company should be your best friend. And mm -hmm. also, a lot of times people are like, oh, well, I see that blogger got that opportunity, and that blogger got that opportunity, and I'm jealous. Why am I not getting these opportunities? It's because nobody knows who you are. <laughs> if you send a simple introduction email and open mm -hmm. up that conversation for a relationship, then they will know who you are. It's just that simple. I will say, I'm a chime in. I will say, I don't know how many of you guys are aware um, that our power hour is happening this upcoming Saturday. We have partnered with Universal Home Entertainment to do a get out giveaway. So one lucky participant is going to win get out on um, Blu-ray, HD, and digital HD. That collaboration is through a local PR company. I just want everyone to be like, people, you do not downplay, not that anyone did, but you never know who PR companies represent. You really don't know who they represent. Um, because I had no idea that someone who represents Universal Home Entertainment, you know, a huge, huge name, is right here in my backyard and wants to work with us for our power hour. So, you know, and we have worked with this PR company in different things, doing things like our movie screening, et cetera. So you never know who is your contact until you really know who your contact is. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's why it's so important to build that relationship because we've had this relationship with this PR company. And now, you know, previously they're just like, oh, hey, this is a client and we're doing a get out giveaway. So this is this would be great for you. And it's like, well, yeah, duh. Of course, we want to be a part of that. So you never know all of a PR company's clients and who they do represent or who they have contacts with. So if you start up small, you know, with them and they're like, hey, we're going to connect you with this local boutique, they might end up being, you know, uh, uh, representing Verizon. They might be representing Essence. You never know. Um, so just getting in contact with your local PR company, if nothing else comes from it at all, but event invites, or any local collaboration, um, still at least you're building up your track record um, and it adds credibility to you. So 
Um, just want to put that out there because you you really never know what, who a PR company's clients are, and that's kind of the beauty of it. You never know, you know, by making a simple connection, you can be connected with a car company, a uh, television company, a magazine, a food brand. You can be connected with everything through one PR company. So really, bloggers understand that. And like I said, PR professionals also know, you know, bloggers can can cover multiple avenues, multiple clients can be uh, reached, um, depending on who you're trying, who you're trying to tap into, what you're trying to do. You can really use one blogger in many different ways, so long as it aligns with their brand. So that's why it's important to know, you know, who you're working with. Because you might not kill two birds with one stone. I need you for this Mazda campaign. I see you drive a Mazda. I see you like Mazda. Cool. I need you for this Mazda campaign. You're also a mom blogger. Cool. I also represent um, SC Johnson. So definitely, 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 you know, I hope all, I feel like we were a little jumbled just because of the questions, but I hope that was helpful. Um, so now we are going to open it up to live Q&A, which I'm sorry, there's like so many questions. Some have been answered, some have not been answered. If your question has not been answered, um, can you please repost it? Can we do that? Yeah, they can repost it. And I also saved some of them. So Tanisha said, how do we find um, PR companies to send welcome emails? Um, I was just telling someone that LinkedIn is your best friend. Literally, mm -hmm. press releases and their contact information is on the press release. It, it's there. Press um, releases are everything. If you're ever looking for a contact, press release. Press um, release. I also mm -hmm. included PRnewswire.com in here. Um, I gave a link to that. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a question. I think really just, it's really, for me personally, I'm going to say Google. I Google just about everything. Um, and I will look up PR companies Miami because that's where I am. And I will, you know, go from there. Mm -hmm. And then look through them, see who's around. The webinar will be up. That's a uh, Ashley question. Um, the webinar, I, yeah, it's being recorded, mm -hmm. so you should be able to access it through the same link. So it won't change links. I don't have to answer Latoya's question. I don't have an actual example personally. I don't know if someone else wants to share an, an example, example of a pitch letter. What was her question? Um, she wants an example of a pitch letter. I do have them for purchase on my website. I also have blog posts specifically for um, small bloggers. I don't know your following size or whatever, um, but I specifically have stuff on my website for um, in terms of blog posts on pitching brands that might be helpful to you. Because, hey, I've learned as a smaller blogger myself, if you can pitch as a small blogger, you can do just about anything, okay? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I have pitched, not to go into me, but I've pitched for hotel stays, I've pitched for lunches, I've pitched for experiences, I and pitched for it all of things. Like so, pitching is definitely a thing, <laughs> but doing it right and really getting you know getting close with that PR company is essential. Yes, I remember this question. I don't know your first name because it just says us, but I do remember you had asked about should you include pricing on it. I did at one point, but I took it off. Why is because you never know. So, okay, so one, you don't want to deter people based on your price. I know it sounds weird, but some people get scared of your price and are like, oh my God, I can't afford her. Other cases, a company might be willing to pay you more than what is in your media kit. So, for example, my uh, my actual rate for doing a blog post campaign, quote unquote, was half of what my recent collaboration was paying me. So it's like if I had sent that to them and was like, hey, this is how much I want for a blog post, I would have gotten paid half of what they were actually trying to offer. Exactly. So it kind of um, I say no, because you, ju you just really want to talk to them. I think just going back to that negotiation, having a conversation, a fluid conversation between the PR company and the blogger as to what's going to happen, what are the terms of exchange, you can really see and guide kind of, you know, 
where the conversation goes. If they're like, hey, we want to pay you 300 and you were looking for 75, you don't want to send them that 75 and miss out on you know, them paying you 300, which you obviously deserve that if they're offering it to you. Um, so yeah, I personally say no to pricing. I don't know if Ashley has, if she's with me, if she's against me on yeah, that no, one. That, that's the same thing I was going to say is because you never know what they have on their minds. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in the same situation where I had a number in my mind and the number that they sent me back was sometimes double or triple what I was thinking. And that's because, you know, one of our beginning side is not knowing your power. Um, so, so it, it really does, um, it does hinder you. It can hinder you if you send them a number and they were thinking, you know, actually our budget is a thousand. This girl only wants 200. Like, is there something wrong with her? Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is a really low value. Are we going to get low, low content, you know, mm -hmm. low, um, a low quality of content? Um, so definitely starting that conversation and having it a back and forth will be the best thing to do. Um, and then I saw another question in the beginning was, would you consider influenced or free products a way to show that you worked with brands? So that's tricky Ooh. because technically you didn't work with the brand one-on-one, -on -one, um, but you do, if you all are familiar with influencer, they do ask you to post on different social media platforms and say that you got this from influencer. And, um, you know, if you want to include that in, you know, a pitch letter or your media kit or whatever, I would say that this partnership was made thanks to Influencer. Because if you say that you partnered with Dove, right, and you're sending this to Mazda, I don't know why we keep talking about Mazda, and you're sending <laughs> Mazda is a hot topic tonight. And little do you know, the PR person for Dove and the PR person for Mazda are actually best friends. So then Mazda's going to hit Dove up like, hey, I saw that you worked with Cheryl. And then Dove is going to be like, I don't know who Cheryl is, but if you make it clear that this partnership was actually, you know, facilitated, brought to me by influencer, then it'll be obvious. That's why, you know, they don't know who you are. It's because they gave that opportunity to influencer and they, you got it through them so it wasn't a direct relationship because if you're posing it as a direct relationship then technically that's a lie and we don't want anyone to get caught in a lie out here saying that they're doing something that they're really not um question on this is a really good question should you pitch to a company more than once if they haven't responded so i have two answers for this yes and yes kind of so for the first portion of it, if you pitch to a company and you have not heard back from them, first of all, you, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, you know, I, I track people's emails. I do this because when you track an email, you know, they've received it, they've read it, and it kind of just gives you insight um, as to what might be happening on the back end. So when I pitch a company, I make sure that it's a, tr it's an email that's tracked. Um, I make sure that they've opened it and if they have and I haven't heard back for them, depending on, I typically wait five to seven days, I'll send a follow up email in regards to my pitch and for, I will basically forward them my original email. I'll be like, hi, just wanted to follow up in regards to my previous email. Please see below. I would love to chat with you in regards to this matter should your company be interested. Something short, simple, to the point. Now. So I don't know what, if that would answer your question, but I'm also going to answer the question of pitching a company if they never responded. So say you pitch, um, let's use something different. Let's say you pitch Target and you're like, hey, I'm this person. Um, I really would like to work with you. And you have this great pitch letter. You follow up, still no response. Cool. Two months later, you're on and popping. You've grown, you know, let's say maybe your email list doubled. Let's say your Instagram following tripled. You absolutely should pitch them again, even though they did not respond the first time. Why? Because you can say in the past two months, look at what I've done. I've known people to get collaborations based on doing that. They were either not responded to the first time or turned down the first time and they pitched them again and were like, hey, just wanted to share my, my little glow up and boom, collaboration. 
So don't take a no, don't take a no response as um, they're not interested. I actually have received uh, partnerships based on me following up initially. Additionally, I have pitched companies twice, and I think it was once that I received a, you know, like yes, let's work together because it now aligns with the company, and we now have budget to do this type of project. Um, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, it all does depend on, you know, what's going on, if they have budget for marketing, et cetera, et cetera, because depending on the time of year, sometimes people have actually gone through their budgets um, for things like this. But do not be deterred if you don't hear. I am a firm believer in following up. I'm a firm believer in, you know, keeping a company in the know with your progress, because, again, maybe you pitch them and, you know, you kind of sort of let them know who you are but it just didn't really align with their brand at the time but then you glow up and it's perfect with it perfectly aligned with their upcoming campaign you know say before you were relaxed hair reaching out to them for the shampoo it didn't it didn't work and now you glowed up you went natural and they just released the all natural hair care line just for the curly girls absolutely you email them you absolutely do so don't be deterred if you don't hear back. I also recommend um, keeping a spreadsheet of who you reach out to so you don't um, get like messy and like forget you reached out to them. You never want to double pitch somebody um, as if you didn't pitch them before, if that makes any sense. Um, you should pitch somebody, follow up on that pitch. Um, from there, don't pitch them again for the same project. I, that, I, I hope that that makes sense. Don't pitch them for the same project. Um, do you have anything to add on that, Ashley? Um, yes. When you <laughs> say you track emails, Tori, how do you oh, do it? Go. go ahead and give them, mind blown them, mind blown them, blow oh them God. away <laughs> with you. your resource of how you track emails. Um, I track emails using Streak. Streak is spelled S-T-R-E-A-K. Um, it's helpful for both bloggers and PR professionals because, like I said, you can see when people have read your email, how many times they've read your email, even the location. I know it sounds like a little stalkerish, but it's very helpful in terms of knowing when to follow up with the respective party. Okay, this person has read my email three times in the past two days, but I still haven't received a response. Maybe I should follow up with them. You hop over to their Instagram. Oh, they're on vacation. So... Okay, since I know they're on vacation, I'll see maybe they'll be back Monday and I'll follow up with them then to give them an extra three days. You know, things like that. It's very helpful in terms of following up um, and also kind of seeing insight as to if the company is interested. I like to think that if a company just opens it one time, they're not interested. I could be wrong. I could be right. Um, a lot of times when I just open emails one time, I'll just put them in spam if I never open them again or I'll just um, delete them because it doesn't pertain to me. If a company is opening your email 25 times in two days, there's clearly interest or they might have questions. So you might want to go ahead and just shoot them a little follow up email like, hey, I'd love to hop on a conference call to chat. Should you have any questions? Um, I'm more than willing to chat with you all. Um, Tanisha, how do you determine your price point for your content? Um, I don't know where Jaleesa is. I don't know if she's tuned out, but we had this whole conversation on um, on this. Before I answer this, L, no, they do, do not um, know that you're tracking it. Um, I hope that people don't think I'm a total creeper, but it's very helpful in a professional sense. I, I don't use it in a creepy way. But in terms of pricing yourself, um, Jaleesa asked a similar question a while back, and it's Really, you know, you have to be honest with yourself in terms of what you produce, and you have to be honest with yourself in what you are producing. And PR companies, you need to also, um, PR professionals rather, you guys also need to be aware that certain bloggers charge, and there's a reason why. Um, a blogger should be able to break down your price point, their prices to you. If they, if you say, hey, I'd love for you to do this um, for free, and they're like, no, actually, sorry, I charge $150. As a PR professional, you have the right to ask them why exactly is there, you know, that price tag associated with X, Y, and Z. And bloggers, you should be able to say, okay, so based on the return on investment you're going to get from how many people it's going to reach, how many posts I'm going to do, my costs, because remember, people, there are costs, whether it's your photographer costs, whether it's um, 
you know, if you have to go out somewhere, gas, all those things I factor into my price. Um, some people do it differently. That's just how I personally do it. Um, and that's another reason why going back to the, if you should include your pricing in your media kit, my rate fluctuates. If I have to travel anywhere, it's going to be a little more because I have to drive, pay gas, pay parking. It's, it's, an, it's an extra thing, but I can always break down how, why I deserve to be paid X, Y, and Z to conduct this campaign. So there's no set rules on pricing. Um, obviously there's, there's like way too high. Like if you are not Beyonce, you should not be charging thousands of dollars and stuff like that. Um, but I would say I would keep, if you're a smaller blogger, I like to think of people who have 10,000 social media followers combined. So that means your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube. If you have roughly 10,000 followers and roughly 5,000 UVMs, I like to personally say you're in the 150 range, personally. It varies per person. It varies based on the quality of what you're actually doing. Um, I personally charge more than that because I, you know, I produce quality. I really am in tune with my audience and I can have a way of showing that to companies. So you really have to be honest with yourself and see what do you actually produce? What audience are you actually tapping into? Like say I'm going to use Brie. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Brie. Her um, platform is called Quirktastic. She taps into people who are blurred. For those of you who are unaware that those are black nerds, she taps into alternative culture in the black community. So if a company is specifically, they're looking to connect with um, black consumers, but specifically that niche, she has the right to charge way more than somebody who also has a following and only like a couple people fit into that respective category. She has the absolute right to charge a little bit more because they are directly going to be put in front of their target audience and it's going to yield sales so you have to look at different things like that um i'm going to keep saying it but there's no set rules i want everyone to get away from thinking like i'm a small blogger i don't know you have the right to be like look my photographer charged me 50 dollars to shoot this ootd and i you know i would like to be paid 50 dollars, so i'm going to charge a hundred dollars Based on my size, it makes sense. You see the value. I'm paying my photographer, and that's what the price is. And you know, feel free to fluctuate, negotiate to, as you see fit, depending on what the project is. Um, did you already? Yeah, you already answered that on um, Mailchimp. Does anyone else have any more questions centered around PR blogging? Um, we're here. This is exactly why we're here. And for those of you who are asking what the power hour is, our power hours are our monthly events where we, um, okay, you're in Hampton Roads. Yeah, um, just send me an email and I'll check. Like I said, the chat isn't a Black Bloggers United chat. It's just a chat full of random um blogger so i'll see if there's one down there um so our power hours are where we meet from 12 to 2 and we work on whatever we need to work on so whether that is um in my power hour we've had a little photo shoot with cupcakes and props whether that is everyone sitting in silence writing a blog post or whether that is sitting there and brainstorming what the name of your blog should be because you're a new blogger. So it's really whatever you want it to look like. It looks different in every city and it looks different every month. And Jessica, she said that she would like to um, recommend a book. It's called This Is How You Pitch. It's not just about pitching, but all things PR. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica. And if anyone else has any um, resources, definitely share them in here. And um, there will be an email going out, a little recap email to thank you all for, um, for you know, spending your Monday night with us. Um, so there's a lot of Hampton Roads in the house. I have to tell Jana, our Hampton Roads regional yes. director. And papers, they also host their events every third Thursday of the month. Um, so Sierra, that should also be in the 
the recap email will definitely send you out um, information about beepers and their upcoming events. Does anyone else have any questions? I don't want to keep you all. Ah, thank you all. Yeah, and you all can follow us at Black Bloggers United. Did we lose you, Ashley? No, I'm right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you were typing. No, it's on the next slide. Oh, yes. Or I could just do that. <laughs> Everyone's contact information. Um, uh, Beepers has a great membership program. They also have, um, if I'm not mistaken, they also have student membership. Um, so if you are someone who is interested in getting involved with their um, network, you can definitely feel free to visit their website. It is bprsdc.org. Um, like Ashley said, they are a national organization, um, but specifically we have partnered today with the DC chapter, which is amazing. So shout out to Sierra, who is in the house um, for connecting us with this great organization. So if you're interested in membership with them, please feel free to visit their website. Um, and our membership, we actually just revamped our membership. Um, so for more information, um, please feel free to visit our website, blackbloggersunited.com. Going back to um, someone who asked for a directory of PR companies, while we don't have a directory, being a member with BBU, if there are campaigns or PR companies inquiring, um, we definitely connect them with bloggers in our network. So that's one of the perks of membership with us. So, you know, Sierra has all the PR people. We have the middle way between the PR companies and the bloggers to connect you all with them. So if anyone is interested on membership with our network, please feel free to visit our website. And I guess, I don't know, Ashley, are you leaving? Because if not, we can stay around if people have more questions. Yeah, if you, know. you all have any questions, I took the slides off. And now you can see us because I always think no, I look crazy <laughs> just talking to a slideshow is so impersonal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so now you can see us if you feel more comfortable asking a question when you're actually looking at someone's like face. we're not people, <laughs> but we're here to answer any questions. Yes, my personal site. Thank you so much, Ashley. Is she uh, my personal handle is at she's candid because yeah, I always keep it candid so. You didn't put our yeah. personal ones. So. And I can't type in this chat, which sucks. <laughs> so. Yeah, and Sierra has included the email address for beepers. Um, thank you to everyone who said, I'm going to watch the replay. Mm -hmm. Mika said, I'll watch it at least two more times. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm so happy that you all um, both sides oh, of the spectrum. Question. If you can provide any piece of advice for new influencers, what would it be? Ooh. Uh, I'm ready with my answer whenever you are. Oh, uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> What's your answer? Do you have an answer? Yeah, I have an answer, but you can go first. <laughs> now I feel weird. <laughs> um, but no, my advice would honestly be focus on your content. I know this is a lot, there's so much happening and we've talked so much about monetizing, connecting, going to events and stuff, but overall, focus on your content first. If you do not have impeccable content or great content or content worth um, companies paying attention to, it doesn't matter how often you pitch them. And I say this because I don't, I don't know about your blog specifically, but I have seen a lot of people who are just like, I want to pitch, I want to get this, I want to do that, I want to do this, instead of focusing on truly being a standout blogger, because that's what people will pay you for. Because like I, I've talked about it on my blog, I'm not huge, but I'll still get paid for my blog. And it's like because I specifically focus on making my content and it's not fluff content. So my advice for any new influencers out there is to really just focus on your content in addition to when you are focusing on your content that ultimately is building the trust and building the relationship with your audience right so when you're producing that quality good content you're really speaking to your audience letting them know i'm here for you i produce this quality for you and you're building their trust and building a mutually beneficial relationship between your audience so 
I think that that is like so key and a lot of people miss out on that. So Ashley. Mine would be everything Tori said, plus um, <laughs> being true and honest to what you want to do and what you're passionate about, because you can't even do what Tori said, which is create quality content if you do not care about what you say you care about. So, you know, like I said, the comparison, the the comparison devil is real and the comparison devil will pop up when you see these beauty bloggers being flown to Bora Bora and you're like, Yarn, <laughs> I wish I could get flown to Bora Bora. Maybe I should start talking about matte cosmetics. But if that's not what you really love, then what are you doing it for? You're just doing it for a trip to Bora Bora? Then go find a sugar daddy that can send you to Bora Bora because you want to be true to who you are. Um, so definitely staying true to who you are, be honest, um, and really put blinders on if you need to. I've had points in my life where I had to unfollow some people because I was comparing myself to them. So hate following is a thing. Like you love yeah. them, but like you hate them because like you're not there yet. And in focusing on where you're not hinders you from actually getting there. Exactly. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to have to put on those blinders, unfollow people, <laughs> to, to take time to get yourself right so you can focus on you. Um, it's so funny. I took a picture, and I didn't realize that this was, like, a popular analogy, but I took a picture when I was at this, like, tulip garden, and it was so cool because there were fully blossomed tulips, and then there were, like, half blossomed tulips, and then there were tulips that were still, like, growing and budding, and I was like, wow, all these flowers grow at different speeds and they're not really concerned about it you know they're all beautiful in their own way and that's what we have to think about and realize as bloggers no matter what your size is we're all blossoming in our own way and just because the tulip next to you is blossoming at a different speed doesn't mean that you're not beautiful and sometimes that's what we think we think we're not beautiful we're not impactful so forget it and it's like no someone out there needs your word I would just like to pop in and add before I answer the next question that I actually wrote a blog post recently. You guys don't have to read it, but it's how I quit social media and how it low-key has helped me overall as a blogger. I got speaking engagements, paid a campaign from not being on social media because I stopped worrying about everyone else and I really just focused on my content. So just to, to, to further... Um, touch on that like it, it really logging i think focusing on yourself and just kind of logging off because we don't realize how much of an influence or an impact rather um social media has but we all feel like we are not anything you know by going on social media and seeing what everyone else is doing when in reality you know i stop looking i focus on myself and people came to me and are like no but you're actually like doing something so that would be the biggest thing that I would say. The best ways to get in front of PR companies or brands, I say introduce yourself. Um, instead of pitching people, because I think that, you know, and this is something that I also had to realize, when you're pitching someone, it's kind of like a job, right? Media kits, your resume, you're sending out that email. It's kind of like a job. You're asking to work for the company and either get paid or get product, which is also deemed payment from a company. So it's kind of like you're pitching a job. So let's have that analogy. If you're pitching a job and they've never heard of you before, it's kind of like they might not, A, they might not be in need for you right now. They might have just completed a campaign. But B, you know, it might not, you might not align with the company if you, if you didn't do everything in your power to pitch them appropriately and make sure that, you know, that's the right fit for you. But, um, I would say introduce yourself. I sent out an introductory email to my local companies here, and I had some people who were interested in um, connecting with me, doing collaborations. Some of them, they, a lot of them actually, when they brought the ideas back, they didn't fit. But regardless, I just sent them a uh, welcome email to let them know, hi, I'm just trying to tell you, my name is Victoria. I have a blog, She's Candid, and it's based here in the area. So if you're ever looking to connect with bloggers, do a collaboration, I'd love to chat with you. Um, PR companies are the same way. Just like I don't know if um, 
you do follow any influencers, just like when they get packages and these PR companies send them beautiful packages like, hello, LaToya, um, we just wanted to send you our new uh, Wet n Wild line. And they, it's all beautifully packaged. And nice. Some people send packages like that to PR companies. You can send a, a nice little package to them like, hi, I just wanted to introduce you to my brand or whatever. You can get creative. I mean, I personally don't have uh, money for all of that to send them like a whole package. But people do do it. People do send um, uh, like a printed out media kit to PR companies um, just to introduce themselves. So I think that the best way to get in front of them is first to not pitch them necessarily. And I'm talking PR companies. I'm not talking brands. I'm talking PR companies. I would introduce yourself to a PR company because going back to what a PR company is, they represent multiple clients. So there's probably multiple ways that you can work with them. Um, so you don't want to just necessarily solely go for the kill. Like I'm going to pitch this one collaboration I have in mind. I would introduce yourself to your local PR companies and start from there. Also, another good thing to do is if you have the money, I know we all might not have the money. The coins. Uh, <laughs> attend a conference. Mm. Um, depending on what the conference is, the majority of the conferences that I'm thinking about, they do have brands there with their PR, um, PR representatives. And I know a conference that I love and go to every year, um, they have tons of PR representatives there. And you know what I did? I, at the end of the conference, I gave all of the PR representatives a little thank you card with my business inside, my business card inside of it. Um, and in the thank you card, it said, thank you so much for pampering us this weekend. Um, you know, one of them did a spa day for us. Another one did a rooftop party for us. So like this company really went above and beyond for us. And that's what PR people do. PR companies, they go above and beyond for us. So to have just a piece of gratitude um, on, on their side for them to receive something so nice when they're always the ones giving, giving, giving really does show that you are above and beyond the rest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What other questions? Do you sell a copy of or create a custom welcome letter to PR companies? No, I personally just, it's kind of like a pitch, but it's kind of not like a pitch. Um, I use my standard format and instead of actually pitching an idea, I just let them know I am open to speaking engagements, sponsored content, and I'll gear it towards the company. I won't just send, I, I have a generic one, but I'll send like, um, say I sent a couple to um, local restaurants, right? So you guys might be thinking like restaurants. Um, but to do things like I specifically would do Instagram territory or Twitter territory with local restaurants, should they be looking for people to come and test out any new items on the menu, things like that. So I gear it specifically towards whoever I'm sending that welcome letter. Um, but maybe down the road, I'll have a custom welcome letter. I don't know. I, like I said, I kind of use my pitch template and just tweak it to how I like it and... It has yielded a couple responses for me. Um, how do you get a press pass as a blogger? You pitch for it, girl. You pitch for a press pass. Um, get into contact, depending on where it is. Um, if you're looking, speaking to anyone who's interested in working on events and getting a press pass, sometimes it's not always done through a press company, especially if it might be a smaller entity. Um, you can look on things like Eventbrite. I love Eventbrite. I'll go through and um, look and see if there's any events happening in the area that I want to get involved with, and I'll just contact them and ask, hi, do you have a press pass? Um, not hi, I won't say hi, do you have a press pass? I will pitch them inquiring about the press pass, just like I would with anything else. I would pitch them, formal pitch letter. Um, yeah, um, and some companies, depending on who they are, they offer press passes, and they'll say, if you're interested in applying for a press pass, click, click here. Um, but regardless, even if it says click here and like submit, you're still pitching. So remember, even if it's an established thing, like um, I know Empower Her, for example, had press passes, you're still trying to pitch yourself, 
whether you believe it or not. So if it has like a fill out this form, when it has the other information or anything else, let them know why they should pick you to have a press pass because if it's an established, excuse me, if it's an established company or an event, um, they probably have tons of people wanting press passes. So why should they give you one? You always have to remember, whenever I craft anything, I'm like, why should they pick me? And if I can't answer that, I have no business pitching them. So um, above all, when reaching out for press passes or whatever it may be, ask yourself, why should they pick me? And be sure to somewhere include that in um, your pitch letter, if it's a pitch letter, or if it's specifically on their website that you're inquiring about the press pass, make sure to include why they should pick you. Um, how soon should you get business cards? As soon as possible. <laughs> um, I am the queen. If anyone has ever been out to an event with me, I am the queen of never having business cards. And it's so tacky and it's terrible because everyone always asks me for one. Um, I went to an event this past weekend and didn't have business cards and someone asked me for one. So, you know, it's you should never not have business cards. And I say that because the moment when you, when you, um, when you need it, like you, that it's too late, you know? So just have them in advance. Um, but you truly, can never have it too early. If you are broke, girl, I'm not saying that you are broke. <laughs> but if Trina is broke or if anyone else is broke, too broke to buy a business card or you don't have a good designer, what you can do is create an electronic business card. Um, that is something that I Fair. did at a conference that I went to last year. Um, so what an electronic business card is, is it's basically a picture like a PDF or a JPEG or whatever on your phone. So when someone you meet someone and they give you their business card, in that moment, you send them your electronic business card. Um, and that can look like whatever. If you are not familiar with Canva, Canva is a great platform where you can create these electronic business cards that I'm talking about and it saves money and two how many people that you give your business cards how many of those people actually contact you think about it I'll give you two seconds is it a lot of people if it's not a lot of people why are you I mean, people talk to me on you know <laughs> giving these business cards away if they're not even contacting you so that electronic business card is a free and easy way to have a business card, but save yourself some money. And another one of our directors, AK, she came exactly to Nisha Nunn because they trifling. They forget, they put it somewhere, and then your business card has dust on it when you just spent $50 for 30 at Moo.com. Girl, don't even get me started. Um, but um, AK, one of our directors, she actually came up with a video business card, which is super cool. So it's a video of you. It's basically like your little elevator speech, you know, five to 10 seconds about who you are, how you're contacted. And that is like really unique and clever. It's even more clever than my whole like electronic business card. Um, so definitely. Um, think about that as well. Think about ways that can make you stand out because now you're actually in that person's inbox when you send that. So it's not even like they have to go home and find your business card if they lost it. You're already in their email inbox. Like you're already in there. So yeah. Wait a minute. Pause. I want the details on this little electronic thing. I guess I can ask AK, but um, that sounds really cool and it makes so much sense. Yeah. It's a money saver. I'm all about budgeting, y'all. Me too. Samantha asked, what should you include? Um, I don't know if you think differently. I think it's just mainly your name, best form of contact, your website, and your handles. I don't know if there should be. Yeah. And also, if you could get a cute little carrier like this. This is my carrier. You fancy? Um, <laughs> So this makes you look even more professional because you're like, oh, your name is engraved. Okay, I see you, girl. Um, and then these are my first business cards. And then I had someone draw me. It's Don't Die Afraid. So it's a picture of me being fearless. Um, and then on the back, it's simply just like Tori just said, my name, my title, my website, my social media email. And then this in the middle, so I have a quote. So right now, I actually hate these business cards. I actually just ordered some new ones that are a different design, but they get the job done. And I literally made this myself on clubflyers.com, y'all. The most low budget <laughs> cheap website that I could find. I got like 500 of these for $13. 
So yes, your girl knows how to cut corners. <laughs> My business cards are hot. Um, like mine are the type that I don't even show them to people. Like I'll go to events with my business cards on certain occasions and I won't even give them out. I'll be like, no, I, you know. <laughs> so have your business card game in order. Or at least like she said, if you're not, if you don't have a physical one, have that electronic business card so you can like, you know, have something. Even though we say Insta is the, you realistically, if you want to be professional, like professional people still do have business cards. So I love the idea of an electronic one as well. So any more questions before we wrap up? It has been a whole two hours with you guys. And I, you know, I love the people. But I am starting to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any more questions, um, drop them now or forever hold your peace. Um, I, you know, we, I'm pretty sure I could say both Ashley and I, our inboxes are always open. If we do close this out and you do have another question, um, you can feel free to visit us both on our regular, on our web, regular websites. If you have any, inf any questions specifically pertaining to either of our brands. Additionally, if you have any PR questions, you should absolutely feel free to reach out to Sierra and Beepers, um, Beepers DC. And, um, she provided that email address above, I believe it's beepersdc at gmail.com if I'm not mistaken. Um, and if you have any questions in terms of blogging, connecting with other bloggers, um, blogger tips, definitely become a member of Black Bloggers United. So are there any last questions? Latoya oh, okay. had a question. If your website isn't up yet, um, you know, should you make your cards? What I would say is don't make your printed cards yet. Um, yeah. Because your website, your website is gold. That's the whole big deal of even having these cards is to show off your mm -hmm. website. Um, so what I would do is go with the electronic card for the moment. So that'll have your other forms of contact. And then you can use that because it's free. It's free and it's free. Um, and then once your website is up, then you can get the printed versions because like I said, your website is gold and that's what you want to highlight. Um, so definitely wait to get the printed ones. And then, oh, Chantel or Chantel, I wanna make sure I pronounce that correctly. Uh, she said that she would suggest including your phone number as well. That's definitely um, a good tactic as well. I personally don't have my phone number because I don't answer calls from people that I don't know. I just have this thing. Um, but I know a lot of people who use Google phone numbers. So it's not actually a phone number that connects to, you know, they could look me up on Sprint and find out my, you know, my address and my social security number and all that other jazz. Um, it's just a Google number. So that would also be helpful as well. Um, so, yes, a phone number is great. And also make sure that this information is in your signature and emails um, because that also looks really professional as well. And like we said, you want to look as professional as possible. Any other questions? Speak now, because Tori's gonna go eat food. <laughs> but yeah, like um, Victoria said, you can contact us at info at Black Bloggers United. Um, or you can contact me at directors at Black Bloggers United, um, and we'll be glad to help you in any way that we can. Yes, and if, like I said, if you have any questions in, in regards to PR, joining beepers, anything PR related, definitely feel free to reach out to um, beepersdc at gmail.com, amazing group of individuals. Um, who are seasoned vets in the, in the PR industry. So um, definitely look into membership with them. Um, but we thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. It was a pleasure to have you. You guys are a great crowd, all talkative and with the commentary. Like, I love it. I love a, a lively crowd. So um, thank you all so much. I don't have anything else to say, but thank you for being here with us tonight. Yes, we appreciate you all. Go get some food and go get some sleep. Take care of your mental health. <laughs> Have a good night. Bye. Bye.